We'll make this a short one. Welcome back. Hazards. Kind of obvious. But there's actually two types of hazards associated with earthquakes. Two things to worry about. There's the primary hazard, which is the shaking, moving, or cracking of the ground, which directly causes damage. So, because of the earth shaking, this apartment building fell down. Because of the earth shaking, this bridge collapsed. Because of this because of the earth shaking, this road fell over. Whatever it may be. So that's a primary hazard, you know, obviously, right? But oftentimes with hazards, and we'll talk about these kind of with volcanoes and a number of other things, you have the primary hazard, what we think of. But then there's also a secondary hazard where the quaking, the ground shaking, causes other destructive events that does the damage. My house survived the earthquake, but the earthquake caused a landslide, and the landslide destroyed my home. Secondary hazard. It didn't come directly from the earthquake. The earthquake caused something else that caused the damage. Or the earthquake didn't, you know, knock over my apartment building, but it ruptured a gas line, which caused a fire, which burnt down my apartment building. Or the earthquake didn't kill a bunch of people. Uh, the earthquake caused a tsunami. Because the focus of the earthquake was below the ocean, and it caused a tsunami, a giant tidal wave, and that tsunami rushed onto land and killed a bunch of people. Or disease. The, the uh, earthquake cut, you know, didn't destroy the village, but it cut it off, it ruptured the sewer lines, so there's poop water everywhere, now everyone is sick. So we didn't die from the earthquake, we died from the poop water, the disease. And then a fun one is something called ground liquefaction. And that's where the ground liquefies, for lack of a better term. Um, for instance, this isn't some crazy art exhibit where they kind of cut the car in half. The ground liquefied and sucked in this car. This happens oftentimes in areas that are at or near the shore of the ocean or, or large lakes. The ground around, you know, the shores of, for, for example, oceans is saturated with water. So if, the, if there's an earthquake in an area near the shore and it starts to shake the ground, well, the ground mixed with the water, the dirt mixed with the water kind of forms like a quicksand almost. It turns to a liquid. The ground liquefies and sucks things in. It can suck in houses, buildings, cars. So ground liquefaction is quite interesting. So yeah, so you can kind of see the remnants uh, here. But yeah, this ground liquefied and then just sucked the car right in. You can tell this area is probably near the ocean somewhere. I see kind of like these palm trees, other trees uh, typical around beach areas. I'm guessing the beach is just right on the other side of this property here. But yeah, sucked right in. Ground liquefaction. We'll look at some videos in class about that. But well, one last thing to add here is that secondary hazards not only in earthquakes, but in a lot of other hazards, volcanoes, etc., they actually cause more damage and sometimes more death than the original, in this case, earthquake. A lot of times in earthquakes, again, you know, there are some places in the world that are more well built, they can withstand uh, the earthquake itself, but you know, maybe not other factors, landslides, fires, tsunamis. And even if structures survive, people as well, Oftentimes, they're not killed by the earthquakes. Some do, but for instance, there was an earthquake that happened in Japan, which we'll learn a little bit more about. The earthquake itself caused some deaths, but it was more so the following tsunamis that killed a number of people. Same with uh, some uh, earthquakes in Indonesia. The earthquake can harm property and kill people, but there were tsunamis that came after that killed hundreds of thousands of people. So secondary hazards can cause more damage than the original primary hazard, oftentimes. And that's definitely the case with earthquakes. Um, so let's go ahead and pause here. Um, so when we come back, we'll talk about Earth's interior. Now, we've talked about this in prior units. Why are we bringing it back here? Because earthquakes actually help us figure out what's inside the Earth. More on that in just a second.